in this beautiful booklet of say 1947 or so from Radio Bulletin um, one of the famous um, publishers of the past up to approximately as far as I know 1985 it's all about measuring instruments and um, here there is the uh, an article about the so-called measuring bridge and I have paid attention in the past to this measuring bridge and this is of course all Dutch text but anyway perhaps it's interesting for my Dutch viewers and when you are a little bit acquainted with electronics you will surely know the principle and the principle is the so-called Wheatstone Bridge much more information about that is on the World Wide Web it's a classical way of measuring resistors, capacitors, coils, etc. etc. Uh, the central idea of that Wheatstone Bridge is and here also construction of a measuring bridge 1948 or so um, the classical idea of the Wheatstone Bridge is that we have here in at least in this case an AC source uh, here is a certain impedance, could be a resistor, could be a capacitor, could be a coil. And uh, here is a potentiometer and um, when the bridge is in balance, there is no current flowing here. Because all the values here of the different components are the same, but when uh, there is an unbalance in the circuit in the Wheatstone bridge a current will start to flow here between these two electrodes I know that this is more or less abstract but anyway um, I made here that Wheatstone bridge and uh, when you have followed my channel you will surely know that I was busy trying to make a very easy um, tester for especially 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz coils and then especially uh, trying to test them in the range of uh, 1 Henry up to approximately 20 Henry or even more and that are very very big inductances you can see it here from inductance we know that um, we may add the inductance of separate coils here when you switch them in series so here it's 14 Henry I have by the way I had to buy this beautiful instrument that can measure inductances uh, otherwise I had to make a far too deep dive into say all the theory and that theory is quite complicated and that's a reason why this all only refers to measuring coils in uh, on the frequency of 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz anyway this uh, instrument by the way worked very nice and L means coil anyway uh, like I told when coils are mounted in series we can add the inductances and I've measured at first all these coils separately they were for 14 Henry so uh, we have here now um, five of them here in a row so five times 14 Henry so 
that's the total inductance at least on 50 hertz and why is that inductance measurement so uh, difficult we have all kinds of coils coils that have to work on for short wave for instance or for instance on 20 kilohertz with that old school um, transformer that I've showed in the past in an earlier video that was a high voltage transformer for an analog television set they work normally on approximately 18 kilohertz have a ferrite core and you can surely see here that all these coils have not a ferrite core but a laminated steel core so the properties of course differ very very much for instance here this tiny coil it is 30 milli henry i tested it on the meter that i've showed and the meter gives out this exact uh, value in terms of henry's anyway um what's the idea of my circuit like I told, it works on 50 Hz. And here we have also that Wheatstone bridge. Uh, perhaps it's not very easy to detect it, but it is surely there. It is a Wheatstone bridge. Uh, important to tell that you see here three coils. And they were the same as this one. And I've shortcut them. And I leave that only uh, to show the experiment. So now I've taken them out here. I've made a wire here. And here you see that I've taken them out. So uh, we have here now only a wire. And that wire is here. So we only have now here that a 14 Henry coil of 384 DC ohms and with that coil we measure the um, other coils in the range of 1 Henry up to approximately 56 Henry at 60 Hertz or 50 Hertz I measure it at 50 Hertz I don't think it will deviate so much from the 60 Hertz situation uh, we know of course that the resistance of a coil is frequency dependent but I don't want to dive in all the say formulas I did it in the past and there are say videos on my YouTube channel where I have paid much more attention to that the importance of the frequency on the resistance, say the AC resistance or the impedance of a coil. Uh, anyway, this is say a first experiment that I wanted to show. Perhaps it's interesting. Anyway, um, again here, the inspiration. Um, well, what have I done? It's a wind sorry it's a wheatstone bridge and here with this potentiometer we set say uh, the balance of the bridge and here is that coil under test it can be between 1 henry and 56 henry it was tested again 50 hertz a laminated steel coil and uh, there is now a relation between the position of the um, potentiometer and the Henry value. So it tells this uh, how this, uh, this potentiometer is set tells uh, the Henry value and the importance is that we must at least we do here say a uh, nulling out of the coil in the test and this one and only by the way test call anyway let me show it what is happening um, 
Here is the test situation. We now have all these coils in series. That means for 14 Henry five times. That's a quite high Henry value. And when I turn the potentiometer here, there is a moment on the meter, the AC voltmeter, where it nulls out. So here you see the meter move. I do it now here. Move it. And there is a moment here where there is a balance between the, the coil that's under test and the um, reference coil. So here you see directly that the meter moves to zero. And this is the, po the position of the potentiometer. So this stands for a certain Henry value. And in this case it is say 56 Henry, all these coils in that row in series. I have to put down the camera for a while. Because I want to show that with this setup you can also go to the more or less lowest range of the meter and that is this coil that's that's also in series with the whole bunch but I shortcut out now all the high Henry coils and we only measure now here the 1.2 Henry coil. You see the meter move it gets to a <laughs> very very fierce anyway um and now I I turn that potentiometer again here to the lowest value and here you see that you can still with that one say 1.2 Henry coil still find that null where it works. And it also shows here that the potentiometer is now in this position. So uh, one Henry approximately the position is here and say with 50 Henry, sorry with uh, 56 Henry the potentiometer is here. So the, the, we can now directly derive from the position of the potentiometer the inductance. And like I told it, it's not so simple as I show it. Though I found that this is a more or less reliable way to measure that inductance. Again, on 50 Hz made for coils with say a laminated steel core or iron core and well let me show the schematic finally again. Thanks for watching it is only an experiment, but I'm more or less sure that this way of measuring gives reliable results. And over somewhat. And again, thanks for watching. The crux of the ID is to find the position here where there is a null. So where the AC meter moves back and forth and here is that zero. That's directly, directly related to the Henry value.